Welcome back to the channel everybody. In today's video we're going to be talking about legato playing on the trombone. Legato is one of the most problematic aspects of most tromboners, tromboners, trombonists playing and this is an issue that I want to raise today and you'll see that with the proper technique and a sufficient amount of practice it is possible for you to play with a nice legato. So before we get started if this is the first time you're on the channel my name is Raf and on this channel we talk a lot about the technique of brass instruments and trombone specifically but not only. We do some arrangements, we do some technical play alongs where we uh, practice technique together and a lot of other really cool stuff. So if you're new here please consider subscribing to the channel and pressing the little bell button so that you get notified when I post some new content. So let's get straight to the point of today's video. I'm going to try to make it as effective and fast as possible, so listen up. Um, what is legato playing? First of all, what does it mean to play legato? Well, basically playing legato means playing uh, a certain amount of note with no space in between. So in most instruments it's actually quite easy. If you're playing on the trumpet or on a euphonium or on a tuba, you just blow the note, you don't put any tone, you blow the note and you press the valves and there you go, you get uh, some notes. If you want to play a scale, you just press the valve in the right order and get, there goes the scale. You don't need to put any uh, tongue at all. If you play the violin or if you play the cello, same principle. You can play with just one bow and then move your fingers and you'll have different notes. You don't have to uh, play uh, the different bows, you don't have to play different no uh, um, for every single note that you play, you don't have to do a new bow movement, right? Uh, and a, a lot of instruments are like this. Now, for the trombone, it is very different, of course, because we play with a vowel, uh, with a with a slide, sorry. And as you noticed, if you don't have the proper technique, and if you just blow in the instrument and don't put any kind of tongue at all, in most notes you will have a smear. A smear just means like some sort of glissando sound, so something like... Sorry, I hit the camera right now with, with the, the slide. But you understand, right? This is like the stereotypical sound that people think a trombone has. This is what we're made for. This is what a lot of people associate with the trombone too. This is because we have a slide. Now, you don't have to actually tongue every single note on the trombone to have a proper legato. You only need really to tongue the notes when you are going in the same direction as the sound. So if you're going down in the sound and down with the slide, then you'll need to tongue. Uh, th th because otherwise you'll do this sliding uh, sound. But if you do the opposite, so if you're going up with the sound, let's say, but you're going down with the slide, then you won't need it because you will be jumping from different harmonics to one to another. So you see that I am not using any kind of tongue, but because I'm doing a contrary motion from the slides to the sound, I'm jumping from different harmonics. Uh, harmonic being what we practice when we do flexibility, so... This will be the first harmonic, we can call it like this. This will be the second one. So when I do a contrary motion, I jump through those harmonics and so I don't have the glissando sound. I hope this is clear. If it's not, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. Now what happens if you want to have a nice legato sound? and you're going in the same direction. Well, it's very simple. You put a little bit of tongue. Now, the question that is the hardest to understand for a lot of players is when exactly do you put the sound? Do you put, do you put the tongue? Do you put the tongue when you arrive on the notes? Do you put the tongue before or do you put the tongue during the movement? Well, for me, it is my belief and <laughs> I think this is the right way because it works, sorry, it works for me anyway. It works for my students and this is how I learned it. You're supposed to move the tongue at the same time as you move the arm. So of course what is hard here is to coordinate the two because on an arm movement you might have 
from position one to position two, okay, maybe you have four or five centimeters, but from position one to position four, you might have 20 centimeters approximately, and your tongue will only be maybe four millimeters, the movement. So you really need to do it at the same time. You need your arm to be nice and fast, and you need to be very well coordinated with your tongue. So we're gonna be talking in a different video that I've prepared already of uh, tongue and slide coordination some exercises for that. So do make sure that you subscribe to the channel and that you press this little bell button so that you are alerted next time I post a video because it will be on tongue and slide coordination. For today, the only thing that I want to show you is the tongue movement in itself. So there's a different there's different ways of pronouncing the tongue movement for different articulation. If you have a more of a ta 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 tonguing uh, sound, then you will have a more marcato, more detached sound. What we want with legato is more of a la la la, and it's going to be the sound that you would do like if you would say the letter L, L, or even I found that I, I was researching a little bit before doing the video because now it comes kind of naturally, it's not things that I t think about every single day, but it's more of a like R, R, like it's like a Spanish speaker, and actually, if you guys know, uh, there's, and it has nothing to do with it, but I'm very interesting in the, interested in the subject, uh, the different kind of techniques that people use when they play a brass instrument or a wind instrument in general for different languages that they play. So does somebody that speaks Spanish play different than somebody that speaks English or that first language is Japanese or something? If you have any kind of information or any thoughts on that, please put them in the comments below. It's quite interesting and it is applicable for what we're saying here. So I am using the sound L, uh, between L and the Spanish, you know, R. Um, so basically, the tongue stays um, quite low and it goes uh, quite in front of the palate. So it's, it's, it's hard to explain, but I guess if you've said the sound l -l 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 -l, you'll know what it, what it feels like. I don't know why I'm trying to describe it. But basically, what we want to do is keep the stream of air and just kind of disrupt a little bit the stream with the tongue. So you continue blowing, you're always blowing, always blowing, and then the tongue will just come and pass by a little bit. It would be the same analogy if you were to blow hope you can hear it on the camera This is the contrary to what we want to do. What we actually want to do is something more in the likes of... So we continue blowing and the tongue will come and cut a little bit the note during the movement with the arm so that we don't hear that sliding uh, thing. So there's going to be two exercises for today. The first exercise is just imagining the tongue, not doing it, playing a long tone and imagining the note. So it's hard for you to see what, to hear what's in my head, but basically I'm playing a long note and imagining myself saying the word L. So L, 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 but not doing it in the instrument. And now I'm going to do exactly the same, but this time I am actually going to uh, play those little l l l. And it's very important to do it in this order because a lot of people they practice tonguing, and when they practice legato, they change the air. And this is not what you want to do. You don't want to stop the air because ultimately you would like to imitate the valves or you would like to imitate the cello or the violin where you have one stream of air and different notes. This is what we want to do. This is why the tongue has to be minimal. This is why the letter L is a good letter. It's a good consonant for that exercise. So let's try it. So you see that the note is separated in different, uh, different, you know, there's different notes. You can hear, 
you can hear it, but you also hear that the sounds never stop. So this is the principle behind the legato, this is the very core principle. And if you want to play any kind of legato melody afterwards with your tongue, with your, with your arm, with your, with your slide, then you need to really understand that principle. And the video could stop now, but I'm going to show you a second exercise for you to practice. Practice it and then send me uh, your comments down in the description below. Uh, so that exercise is going to be a little scale exercise. So we're just going to play. I'm just going to show you one example and then um, you get to practice it in all the registers and all the keys, etc. Uh, just a little reminder, if you want to get all the PDFs of everything that I say here on this channel, uh, all the exercises, you also get all the arrangements, you get everything that I do on this channel, you get it in your inbox uh, in PDF format, I will put a link below to my Patreon page. This helps two things. First of all, it helps me continue making videos and content that is useful to you and to everybody that's watching uh, and to potential people that might be watching <laughs> in some near future. Um, and also, you know, it's what I said, you will get all the PDFs so you can just put everything on your stand and just start practicing. <clears throat> so, having said that, this is the exercise that I want you to do. First, uh, first time that you're going to play this scale, you're going to play it with a very uh, slow slide and make it sound kind of, <clears throat> I don't want to say dirty, but you know, don't, don't try to get the slide moving too fast. And the point of it is to have, is to really hear the sound being continuous. So continuous throughout the glissando, continuous with the air. kind of heard a F scale going down and going up. Of course you hear a lot of things in between. So second <coughs> sorry, second step uh, on this exercise is just to you to move your slide a little bit faster but still no tongue. At this point, it doesn't really matter, so I had a bit of water. At this point, it doesn't really matter if you use the trigger, uh, the first or the second one, if you play on the, ba uh, on the bass drum mode, or if you use the sixth position. It really, really doesn't matter. Third step, we're gonna do exactly like on the first exercise, just add a little bit of tongue, a tiny bit of tongue. We're not going to uh, cut the note. We're just gonna put a tiny bit of tongue to <clears throat> make the, transition cleaner. So try to move the slide and we're going to do an exercise specifically for that later. Uh, try to move the slide exactly at the time that you move the tongue. point is of course <clears throat> sorry is of course to eliminate every little smear every little glissando between the notes practice this exercise we've got two exercises here if you want to receive them in PDF there's the link beneath this video where you can get everything um, and yeah that's it for today's video if this video was useful to you if you've enjoyed it please put a thumbs up if you've not done so already please subscribe to the channel and share it with friends uh, colleagues, whoever will benefit, students uh, of my trombone videos. And yeah, check out my Patreon if you want to support the channel also. I'll see you in the very next video. The next technique video was, is going to be about slide coordination. So really coordinating the air, the tongue and the arm is also valid for valve instruments because it's the same principle. Take care, I'll see you soon. Bye.